Hey guys, today I'm going to walk you through creating a power source behind your TV so you don't have any wires showing here. I've mounted a recessed box just behind the TV there that includes a low voltage pass through as well. The low voltage pass through comes out down here so that if I have any entertainment equipment or any sort of video games down here, it just goes up behind the wall and comes out behind the TV. So one of the first things you want to do is to plan your install. Right now the green tape represents the TV and the TV cabinet and the blue tape represents where the studs are. It may seem a little excessive but it helps me to visualize the height that I want the TV as well as what the cabinet will look like. So a couple things you'll need, a screwdriver, stud finder, drywall knife, something to test the socket for power, wire cutters, measuring tape, and 14 gauge wire. I'm using 14 gauge wire because I have a 15 amp receptacle, if yours is 20 amp you will want to use 12 gauge wire. I also have a couple of uh, wire caps. You can tell the amperage by looking at your breaker box. So you can see this is 20 amp here and 15 amp here. The one we'll be working with is a 15 amp breaker. So that's why I'm using 14 gauge wire. If you had a 20 amp uh, breaker, you'll be using 12 gauge wire. A couple other things that you'll need. I'm using a recessed uh, TV, TV mount. So the left side will have the receptacle like that and then the right side will have the low voltage pass through for like HDMI cables and stuff like that and then we'll have a cover plate like that and then I'm using this down below uh, to feed the wires up to the pass through here. So that's what I'm using. I have a couple of screws as well. So in the planning phase one of the first things you want to figure out is where you'll mount your socket. Uh, I'm going to mount mine here right just below the TV between these two studs. Usually it's easiest to mount your, your, uh, your sockets where, where there's power already in a stud. As you can see that there's no power here, uh, the power is to the left. So it would be easiest to actually mount it here, but on the other side of this wall, there's a power outlet right between those two studs. So I'll just go on the other side of the wall and I'm gonna fish the wire up to there and I'll put the receptacle right there and then I'll cut my hole for the, uh, for the pass through on this side. One issue you might want to figure out before you start uh, is if your stud has a fire block between it. And what that is, it's a horizontal piece of wood which tries to limit the, the amount of air between the lower stud and the upper stud and, and that limits the spread of the fire. Say if there's a fire for example, that would limit the fire. I know that there's no air block here because these are steel studs and I've used my stud finder to go from top to bottom and uh, the other way as well just to double check that there is no uh, fire block. But usually in some older homes that are wooden frame you'll see a, a fire block uh, going horizontal between studs and if you do have that issue uh, there really is no way to to go around it. Uh, you'd probably have to cut a section of the drywall out to drill a hole through the fire block and then put the drywall back. That involves obviously drywall and mudding, tape and time. To confirm that there isn't a fire block in here, I'm going to do a little cheater method and remove this cable here, which, uh, which doesn't have a box behind it. And I'm going to fish a tape measure up in here and just see how high it goes. So I have the cover off. And then on the outside, I'm just going to check where, where do I want my receptacle. And it's going to be about right there. So that's about 42 inches from this hole. And I'm just going to push the tape measure up 42 inches and see if we hit anything. There we go. There's nothing. The tape measure is all the way up there. That means there's no fire block. So with confirmation that there's no fire block between these two studs, I'm just going to trace my box where I want it between the two studs and then cut it out with a drywall saw. So this is what the box looks like. You just take the adapter plate off here. This, this will be on the outside and then you trace the box on the inside. This is the one I'll be using. So I'm just going to place my box where I want it. I'm going to hold it firmly up against the wall and I'm just going to trace it. So with the box traced out, I'm just going to cut it out now. 
And by the way, where you choose to put the box is totally up to you. You can put it here or you can put it up here. I like to have it down here, so that's where it'll be. You're just gonna take your drywall saw. Try not to go too deep in the drywall because there could be wires or insulation back there. I've verified that there's neither in this one. And you're just gonna cut along the line. Now I'm on the other side of the wall, and this is the receptacle I'll be taking power from. So with the breaker off, I'm just going to remove the faceplate of this one. And I'm just going to test for power. Now I'll remove the receptacle itself. So with the receptacle removed, uh, my plan is to take power from this receptacle here and fish it up through the hole that's in the top there. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a hole there. So that's what we'll be doing. I just wanted to show you, uh, there's two ways that you can uh, run power from one receptacle to another. Uh, the most common way, or 90% of people will do this, is there's four terminal screws in our receptacle. There's two here on the brass side. And then there's two here on the silver side. 90% of people will take power from each screw and, and create a new receptacle off that one. Uh, you can do this and it works. Uh, the only problem is if the receptacle fails, then the power downstream of this uh, will fail as well. And the way that you do that is so you have your power coming in like this. So you're, you have your uh, hot and your neutral over here, which is the white and it connects to the receptacle screw here. And then the screws are connected by this little bridge here. There's a little metal tab on either side. There's one over there and then there's one here. So the power will be coming in and then you take power from this screw and then just power continues on. And, and you'll see a lot of receptacles that are wired that way these days. The way I'll be doing it is I'm gonna take these power wires off of this and create a pigtail or think of it like an intersection. I'll create an intersection of wires and then I'll send power to here, and then I'll send power from above. So I'll create a little intersection somewhere about here, and I'll send power here and send power above. That way, if I need to replace one of these in the future, it'll be a lot easier for the next person. So before I run my power wire up, I just want to get an idea of where I'd want my low voltage to come up, and I want it somewhere about here, because the edge of the cabinet comes up to about here, so I need to move it over. Otherwise, I probably would put it somewhere here but uh, that lines up with the back of the cabinet, so I'll have to move it somewhere here. And that lines up perfectly with the power receptacle up above, so that'll be good. So this is where I want it. I'm gonna take the template and line it up and just push it into the drywall to create a mark. And then I'll use the cover and just draw my square to cut. And I'm just going to triple check that this will fit in there. So just as I did with the hole up above, I'm just going to cut my square out. Just putting a little pressure on the knife. There's your piece out. Oh, by the way, as a tip, uh, if you want to take your piece out cleanly, you can put a screw in here so that you can hold the screw as you cut around it. I didn't do that. So that's our other cut that the pass-through will go into, just like that, and it will have our wires coming out of there. So with both holes cut, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go around to the other side of the wall, and I'm going to fish the wires through the receptacle just enough so I can see it here, and then from here, I'll fish it up to here and have my wire coming out. So let's go around to the other side of the wall. Actually, before I go around to the other side of the wall, I just want to show you how I measure my wire. So re the receptacle on the other side of the wall is about this height, and the receptacle that I'm putting is about here, obviously. 
What you do, you're just going to take your wire, get some lens out, and you want about six inches out of the box. So that's about six inches coming out there. I'm just going to straighten it out to where I want it here, hold it, and then I'm just going to go about another six inches. So about this is the length of the wire that I want. And if you're unsure, you can always go an extra six inches or so because it doesn't hurt to have too much wire and clips them off than to have too little wire and then you have to recut the entire length. So with the wire cut, I'm just going to fish some of it up into the hole here in the top of the junction box. Maybe I'll fish like two or three feet up. There we go. Now I'm just going to go around to the other side. Now I'm at the other side and I can see the wire coming up so I'm just going to reach in and pull it up. There's the wire. I'll just continue to pull it up and push it up to the hole up here up above. Now if you have insulation and stuff like that this will obviously be harder and if you have a fire block this would definitely be harder so uh, right now this insulation is going fairly easy. And now just looking at the hole here, here's the wire coming up. I'm just going to take it and pull it out. So we have our wire coming out there. Now I'm at the other side. This is the wire we have coming out. It's about 10 inches or so. I'm perfectly fine with that. So I'm going to connect uh, power here and take power off of this receptacle. And then I'll go around to the other side and connect the uh, recessed receptacle that goes behind the TV. So to create the pigtail, we're just going to take some scrap wire here and take the uh, insulation off. This is what we have, the hot and the neutral and the ground. And then I'm just going to strip about maybe like three quarters of an inch or so off on either side. There we go. Obviously the ground you don't need to strip. So on the power side, we'll be doing a similar thing. I have a strip of wire about five inches here to here, and I'm just gonna take about a quarter, or sorry, three quarter inch off the wire here. Just like I did with the pigtail wire. And here as well. So as I previously mentioned, I'm going to take the power off of this receptacle here and I'm going to put it here to create an intersection and then create, use a pigtail to power this. Uh, you just want to be mindful if, uh, if these little tabs on your receptacle are broken or sometimes you'll have four wires, you'll have two blacks coming in, two whites coming in. If the little tabs broken, that usually indicates that uh, they're both different power sources. So if you have a light switch that connects the top receptacle or the bottom receptacle, they're usually different power sources coming in. So just be very mindful of that. Right now, this is only one source of power coming in and it ends right here and the tab isn't broken. So I'm just going to take the power wires off here. And I'm just going to take it out here. Power wire off here. Next, I'm going to take the ground off. There we go. Now I'm just going to connect these and then I'll connect my pigtail as well. And the pigtail here will power this, and the power coming in will power this one going up. So I'm going to put all my grounds together. There's going to be three wires total. I'll just put them together like this and then I'll take my pair of pliers and just give them a twist. These little ends here that are sticking out, I'm just going to cut those off. You get a nice clean cut like that and then I'll put the cap on it just like that. So I'll repeat that step for the other two wires. That's our first one. Now we'll do the power wire, or hot wire, which is the black one. We'll put our three together, just like that. And I'll take my pliers and just twist them together. Uh 
I'll cut the end off of the two here that are sticking out. And then I'll put a wire cap on it. And you want to make sure that you twist your wires in a clockwise direction. That way they don't become loose as you're putting a cap on it. So those two are done. So next up we'll do the neutral. I'll put my three white wires together, just like that. I'll take my pair of pliers. Next up, we'll cut the very tips off. And then we'll put our wire cap on. So there we go. We've created a pigtail here. This will be the new power source for the receptacle. Basically, we've created an intersection, I guess you can call it, of power. And so it stops here, and then the new power goes up to the recessed receptacle that the TV will plug into, and then we have these three little pigtails coming off. So we'll just put this receptacle back on. So the way you want to do this is uh, twist your wires in a clockwise direction so that when you tighten the screw, the wire tightens around it. So we just do uh, black or hot wire to brass screw. There we go. And then the white wire or neutral wire goes to the silver screw. And we'll just bend the wire in a clockwise direction like so. We'll put it around the terminal screw. And then we'll just tighten the screw around the wire. Just like that. And then the last one will connect to the ground. We'll just bend this in a clockwise direction, just like the other two we did. And then we'll put this around the ground screw. And then we'll just tighten this screw as well. And then for the other two screws that we aren't using, these two, just make sure that they're all the way in. Sometimes when they stick out, they can touch the side of the uh, junction box. So I'm just going to organize this junction box and put this receptacle back in and then I'll go around to the other side and pull the rest of the wire up and uh, work on that side. Next I'm going to install the pass through here. I don't have any HDMI cables at this time to root so I'm just going to leave it open for now and if I need to root anything in the future it shouldn't be a problem. And the way this box works is you just put it in the square that you cut out like that and when you tighten these screws here the arm lifts up and it locks itself into the drywall, or behind the drywall rather, and it tightens against the drywall. So I'm just going to install this now, and then I'll tighten it down. So there we go, that's our cut there. And then I'll just... There we go, that's our box installed. And then I'll install the pass-through now, just like that. That's your pastor install there. So any sort of HDMI or, or whatever RCA cables you have, uh, they'll come right through there. So with the wire coming out through the hole, we're just going to put this box in place now. We're just going to feed the wire through the bottom of the box. And we'll put the box in the hole that we cut. This box has the same deal where it tightens against the, uh, against the drywall just by tightening the screws here. So that's the box in place. We'll just tighten it down now against the drywall. So that's our box firmly screwed against the drywall. It's not going anywhere. Next. We'll put on the receptacle here. So obviously I have too much wire, which isn't too bad, but I mean, it's better than having too little wire. So I'm just gonna cut it here with about seven inches sticking out. And I'm just gonna strip it just the way I strip the other wire on the other side of the wall. have about five inches sticking out here 
and I'm going to strip these screws or wires rather uh, about three quarter of an inch. And just like the other one, you just twist the wire in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to connect the black wire to the brass screw. And the second screw, you always want to put it in, don't leave it sticking out. And then I'm going to connect the neutral wire to the silver screw. Just like that. And you always want to put in the second screw as well. You don't want to leave it sticking out just in case it hits something. And then I'm going to put the ground around the ground screw here. Then I'll connect the receptacle to the new box. Then I'll connect the pass through for the low voltage. Next, I'll just put on the faceplate. And I'll just put in the four screws. We'll turn the breaker back on. I'll check the receptacle that I played with first. We got the power from rather. Still works as it should. Next, I'll check the new receptacle that we wired up. And there's power. So there it is. We have the pass through here for HDMI cords and stuff like that. The cabinet will be here. So like all, all the all the entertainment equipment will be buried in the cabinet and then we'll have the pass through wires going up here and coming out of here. And then we have our power wire here behind the TV. So essentially there'll be no wires uh, visible.